According to ancient Greek texts and myths, a group of Trojan prisoners founded the city of Tinea after their devastating defeat by Greek hero Odysseus and an enormous wooden horse in the Trojan War. More than 3,000 years later, near a small village in southern Greece called Chiliamodi, researchers have uncovered archaeological evidence of the city's existence for the first time. Wait till you hear this. The search began back in 1984 when the archaeologist Elena Korka uncovered a sarcophagus in the village, which is located in the Peloponnesa region south of Athens. Korka, who directs the Office for Supervision of Antiquaries and Private Archaeological Collections in Greece's Ministry of Culture, returned with a team to the site in 2013 to begin the current excavations. In September 2018, following an ancient road, the researchers found a graveyard containing the remains of two men, five women, and two children. The tombs were stocked with bone, bronze and gold jewelry, silver and gold coins, vases and other valuable grave items indicating the wealth of those buried there. But when the archaeologists continued their search north of the cemetery, they stumbled on an even bigger find, the remains of buildings from the ancient city of Tinya itself. They said they had discovered the remains of a housing settlement, jewelry, coins, and several burial sites in the southern Peloponnesia area. Until now, archaeologists had a rough idea of where the city might have been located, but had no tangible proof. The items date from 4th century BC to Roman times. We have often assumed that the Greeks not only borrowed a lot of ingenious inventions from a much older, far more advanced civilization, but it seems that this is another site which could in all possibility further support this argument. This borrowing of technology and strategic design would have aided the Greeks, just like the Incas of Peru and the Egyptians of Giza, in an illusionary perception of strength and intelligence which we feel undoubtedly helped these once successful civilizations flourish. Little is known about Tinya, but legend has it that it was founded by Trojans who had been captured by King Agamemnon of Mycenae during his war with Troy in the 12th and 13th century BC. Agamemnon was the king of Mycenae and leader of the Greek army in the Trojan Wars of Homer's Iliad. He is presented as a great warrior but selfish ruler, famously upsetting his invincible champion Achilles and so prolong the war and suffering of his men. A hero from Greek mythology, there are no historical records of a Mycenaean king of that name. But the city was a prosperous one in the Bronze Age, and there perhaps was a real, albeit much shorter, Greek-led attack on Troy. Both these propositions are supported by archaeological evidence. Unfortunately though, the famous gold mask found in a shaft grave at Mycenae and widely known as the Mask of Agamemnon is dated as up to 400 years before any possible Agamemnon candidate that fits a chronology of the Trojan War. Our main source of information of the Trojan War is Homer's epic mythological account in the Iliad, written in the 8th century before Christ, but almost certainly based on a much older oral tradition. The ancient Greeks themselves considered the conflict to have been a real one and taken place in the 13th century BC. The story came to represent the struggle of Greeks against foreign powers and it told tales of a time when men were better, more able, and more honorable. After Homer, the Trojan War became a staple theme in classical Greek and Roman literature and was revised many times by writers and works such as the Aeschylus. Later authors, especially Aeschylus, altered parts of the story 
probably for dramatic effect on an audience all too familiar with it. Scenes from the conflict were also a favorite with visual artists for the next millennium. The war began when Paris, a Trojan prince, abducted Helen, wife of Menelaus, from Sparta. Paris regarded her as his rightful reward for choosing Aphrodite as the most beautiful goddess in a competition with Athena and Hera at the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. A furious Menelaus then appealed to his brother Agamemnon to create a coalition force of Greek warriors and rescue Helen from Troy. This Agamemnon did and the force from such cities as Athens, Sparta, Corinth, Rose, and just about everywhere else across Greek sailed in a huge fleet across the wine dark sea to Anatolia. Well, they would have done if Agamemnon hadn't upset the goddess Artemis when he killed one of her sacred stags and then boasted he was a better hunter than the goddess herself, famous for her hunting skills. As punishment, Artemis blamed the Greek fleet and only the sacrifice of Ephigenia would appease the goddess into granting a fair win to Troy. Agamemnon duly offered his daughter in sacrifice, but in pity and at the last moment, the goddess substituted a deer for the girl and made Ephigenia a priestess at her sanctuary at Taras. In Aeschylus' version, Agamemnon ruthlessly sacrifices his daughter, then still a child, and so guarantees his wife eternal hatred and his own murder later on in the story. Despite his prowess, Agamemnon was stabbed in the arm by Kuhn, who paid for his strike with his head, and the king retired to his camp. The next big event was when the Trojans attacked the Greek camp and set fire to their ships. Things were not going as well for the Greeks as Agamemnon was largely to blame. He had upset the Greeks' greatest fighter Achilles when he pulled rank and stole the hero's girlfriend. As a result, Achilles refused to fight. Agamemnon sent Odysseus to persuade Achilles to rejoin the fight on the promise of tremendous treasure. Achilles refused and it was only when his great friend Protarchalus was killed by Hector that he put on his armor and helped the Greeks regain the initiative in the war by killing Hector. The war still rumbled on though and it was only Odysseus' ruse of the wooden horse which allowed the Greeks to get inside the city which finally brought the fall of Troy.